Women in Art Rahul Roish During the early modern period, women rarely were given opportunities to educate themselves outside of the domestic sphere or to enjoy successful careers. One woman whose circumstances were very different, however, was the Dutch artist Rahul Roish. Born in 1664, Roish's family encouraged an appreciation of both the natural sciences and fine art in her, even securing her an apprenticeship with the still-life artist William Van Ast. Rahul Roish's works of art were deeply impacted by her apprenticeship with William Van Ast. The older artist would teach her how to arrange flowers for paintings, since still-life paintings were one of the leading Dutch art forms at the time. He would also demonstrate to her how a dark background could make these arrangements stand out. Roish had already come to the apprenticeship with extensive knowledge of botany, as her father was a professor in this field. Her father had also been a collector of unusual animals and insects, which further contributed to Roish's understanding of nature. With her scientific knowledge from her childhood and the skills she acquired during her apprenticeship, she was able to become one of the most noted still life painters of her age. Let's take a look at some of Roish's most notable works. Roish's ability to hone her knowledge to create successful paintings can be seen in this early painting, Insects and a Lizard in a Wood, which was completed in 1684. Here, Roish depicts a charming forest scene that feels as if it could be out of a fairy tale. As William Van Oust instructed her, the light green stem and leaves of the plant contrast the darker greens and browns of the background. A bright light shines on the plant, drawing attention to the way Roish illustrates the leaves from a variety of different angles. The bright orange flowers of the plant also help it to stand out. But, as the title of the painting suggests, some of Roish's greatest work on this painting can be found in the insects and animals she illustrates. Delicate butterflies flutter around the plant in the center of the painting, while a lizard takes a bite out of one near the root of the plant. Another, snake-like creature swims in the stream in the background. The intricate scales on the lizard and the delicate patterns on the wings of the butterflies make the painting feel extremely lifelike, demonstrating to viewers that Roish was a very capable artist when it came to painting nature. You can see this painting at the Fitzwilliam Museum in Cambridge, England. Another distinctive work that Rahul Roish created a few years later was the painting A Still Life with Devil's Trumpet, a Cactus, a Fig Branch, Honeysuckle, and Other Flowers, and a Blue Glass Vase Resting on a Ledge, which she completed in 1690. Like with Insects and a Lizard in a Wood, Roish once again creates a scene here in which a bright light shines on the main area of focus of the painting, distinguishing it from the background. Another similarity between the two works is that the petals and leaves of the plants are shown from a variety of different angles. However, this scene does not take place in a natural setting and shows plants that have been carefully arranged for decoration, a theme Roish would continue to explore in her future paintings. This rejection of painting nature in situ allowed Roish to have more control over her arrangements of flowers. She would take advantage of this formula to include some plants that were considered unusual and did not grow naturally in the Netherlands. For example, in this particular instance, she depicts Devil's Trumpet, a plant that is highly toxic. She also successfully illustrated a cactus, a feat that few European artists before her had attempted. As a result, Roish demonstrates not only her ability to depict plants realistically, but also her ability to depict the diversity of nature. Unfortunately, this painting is in a private collection and cannot be seen by the public. As Roish matured as an artist, her works of art came to take on deeper meanings. One powerful example of such a work of art was Roish's 1711 painting, Still Life of Fruits, Animals, and Insects on a Moss Floor. In many ways, this painting feels like a continuation of her earlier works, containing painstakingly realistic depictions of a variety of fruits, as well as of insects and animals. Once more, Roy shines a bright light on the scene, guiding the eyes of the viewer. On a symbolic level, the painting alludes to the themes of birth and death, as she includes imagery of both unhatched eggs and flies beginning to gnaw at the fruit. 
The pairing of the fluttering butterfly and the salamander lunging at it seemed to further these themes. These themes of life and death seem to take on a religious dimension, as Roish includes grapes and wheat here. The grapes and wheat allude to the Christian sacrament of communion. Given this context, the painting seems to remind viewers of the death of Jesus Christ, which communion commemorates, and the rebirth his followers believe that they experience through him. In this way, Roish builds upon her previously established artistic formula to create a new work ripe with symbolism. You can see this work of art at the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, Italy. Rahu Roish's eye for detail and appreciation for botany and biology shine through in the many different works she created. These personality traits and abilities served her well throughout her career. Many of her paintings sold for extremely high prices, higher than contemporaries such as Rembrandt experienced during their lifetimes. Her clients included powerful figures of the period, such as Cosimo III de' Medici, Grand Duke of Tuscany, for whom she created still life of fruits, animals, and insects on a moss floor. Evidently, although Roish's status as a woman artist made her unusual in the period in which she lived, she was able to gain both financial success and popularity as an artist in her lifetime.